320 miles out of Barca was a sprint race. You're on edge the whole time. White knuckle, just trying to drive as fast as you can, as safely as you can, read the train as fast as you can. Barca was pretty treacherous. Uh, back in 09, I had a pretty good get off and destroyed my first truck. That was a very good learning curve. My dad's had some issues there. A lot of people have wrecked there. So it was a little nerve wracking going to that race. So the goal for the California 300 was to win the Triple Crown. Uh, the Triple Crown came about as a three race series, starting with the Hammers, the Mint 400, and then followed up by the California 300. We won first place at King of the Hammers. Following race was the Mint 400, finishing third, led us into the points lead for the California 300. So we were going for all of it, wanted to win the Triple Crown Championship. My plan for qualifying was just have a good consistent run, um, not be too far back and not be too far forward. back of the dust of the tailing guy um, so it slowed us down a little bit but qualifying fourth was a good spot you know I'm kind of I'm the type of person I'd rather chase than be chased not only was I uh, coming in for the championship for the triple crown my dad was too he was sitting in second goal for the California 300 was to win it. There was no other choice. We had to beat hard no matter what, because if he beat us, even by one spot, he was going to win the championship. Yeah, we're going to send it. I think we're here for the jump contest. I'm not here for the jump contest. I'm here for the win. <laughs> We're here for the win today to be back in Barstow. It's the first time we've been here since 2010, so we'll see what happens from that part of it. Go from there. Uh, right off the bat, when the green flag dropped, you know, we just got into a rhythm. Felt very comfortable in the truck. You know, the truck set up really well. And just started slowly running down uh, the three trucks ahead of us. I passed Rob Mack on the first lap, I think 30 miles in. He was the one off just changing a tire um, right after a super rocky area.
my co-rider Trevor Ellingham that's been with me for quite a few years uh, does really well for me. It keeps me calm in the truck, tells me when to go, when we can pick it up, and just calls out the notes. Fantastic. We've had a phenomenal year, and um, a lot of it is due to him also, you know, making sure all of our notes are, are perfect and everything we do, he calls us on point. The start of the second lap, we were chasing down Lawrence. We were just kind of in his dust. Man, when I thought it was gonna be difficult that I was gonna have to sit in his dust all day, he was off to the side changing a flat tire and got by him and was just able to slowly chase down the leaders. Our pits were awesome. Uh, we went two laps on tires, which was a gamble on our end. Um, at that point, doing 160 miles on tires, they were done. It's just, it shows how rocky it is out there. Once we did that, we decided to change our strategy and take tires every lap after that. Tire changes were happening in 30 seconds and everything just went flawless.
their race went fairly smooth too. They sat in a little bit of dust, you know, just dealing with the tail end of the unlimited trucks. And their first two laps went flawless. Had one flat, just again, it's self-deserved out there with how rocky it is. They got that changed. Uh, they did a driver's change and had Johnny Gould do the second two laps and his laps were flawless with no issues. Harden qualified first, and with me qualifying fourth, you know, it was a little nerve wracking because we had to beat him. That's what it came down to, no matter what. Didn't matter anyone else, didn't matter, you know, if someone else won, I had to beat Harden. We were back and forth on time. He would get a flat and I got one flat and we would just kind of chase all day long. And But it came down to really the last 10 miles. We thought it was all over because we thought we were catching a slower class vehicle sitting in the dust and by the time we cleared his dust we looked over to our left and it was him. Uh, when we saw him to the side of the road, you know, it kind of goes both ways. It's like, yes, we got this but you don't have it till you cross that checkered. Um, and even then it's like, all right, make sure tires are all good. You know, make sure you don't do anything stupid because even the last five miles here is pretty treacherous. You got to go through some quite a few double downs and all this treacherous area and rock. And so, but we were able to play it safe and cross the checkered flag. Nothing beats to be able to win one of these races, be able to pop the big bottles of champagne, especially with the overall and pop the bottle and spray the crowd, spray my teammates. It's just the greatest celebration ever. Let's give it up for the Householder crew! Come on! <laughs> that is a true professional. Did you see the, did you see the stage pop? Not only is it awesome to be able to win the California 300 myself, but to have my father do it in his truck alongside us, and then also win the Triple Crown Championships is pretty rad. You know, not very many father-son teams get to do that. We do this racing together, and to be able to come out on top, that's, that's what we do it for. Householder taking home all the bottles of champagne for Unlimited Truck Woo! and Truck Spec. Pass it around. I'd like to thank my father. Uh, without him, this is not possible. He loves this race in desert, racing just as much as I do. Um, all of my team here at the shop, Jonathan, uh, Justin, Colby, they prep phenomenal trucks. We had no mechanical failures that weren't self-induced, you know. Races are won here in the shop, so that's pretty red feeling. Um, all my chase guys that come out and help us out, again, we can't do it without them, because without them we can't pit, we can't do all this stuff. And, they take their time off and come and hang out with us so we can run around circles in the desert. And for them to only see me maybe once every few hours or one time at all, um, I give it up to them. Hey, do a kickflip. Oh.